Hello everybody. Hope you are all fine. This is the second session on gametogenesis that is oogenesis. And the participants at the end of this session should be able to define oogenesis, define primordial follicle and its various stages of development. Describe oogenesis with reference to prenatal, birth through to puberty, puberty to menopause phases. Describe graphene follicle. Describe a mature female gamete. Give a brief review of hormonal regulation of oogenesis. Give a brief review of events in oogenesis and clinical significance of ova in preservation for extended time. Describe the clinical significance of abnormal oogenesis and its consequences. Oogenesis is the entire sequence of events in which primordial sex cells, that is oogonia, are transformed into mature ova. It begins before birth but is not completed until after, after puberty and it even extends into menopause. For practical purposes, it is divided into three phases. Number one, prenatal phase. Number two, birth to puberty phase. Number three, puberty to menopause phase. We start with the prenatal phase. The primordial germ cells, which are committed sex cells like cardiogenic cells, are formed in epiblast during second week of development. They travel through caudal part of primitive teeth during gastrulation and reach wall of the yolk sac close to allantise during third week. During fourth week, they start migrating through the dorsal mesentery to propose site of gonad, that is dorsal wall of embryo, and they reach there by the end of fifth week. They continue increasing in number by successive mitotic division during migration and also when they reach their destination site. And here they are ultimately renamed as Uogonia. During month three and four, Uogonia by repeated mitotic divisions produce clusters of cells. Each cluster is surrounded by a layer of flattened epithelial cells which are named as follicular cells. At this stage, some primary oocyte may be seen. A primary oocyte is a cell which is produced by repeated mitotic division of the oogonia and ultimately reach a stage where it can't divide mitotically and it is now named as primary oocyte. During month 5, oogonia number is about 7 million and some of these oogonia start degenerating. During month 7, majority of the oogonia have degenerated. Primary oocyte number increases and each oocyte has got a layer of follicular cells. Before birth or just after birth, all oogonia have transformed as primary oocyte. Number two, all primary oocyte have started first meiotic division. Number three, all primary oocyte have acquired a layer of single follicular cells. And the notable 
point is that no primary oocyte is formed after birth. Phase second, birth to puberty. All primary oocyte have started first meiotic division, but they do not proceed to metaphase. Instead, they pass into prolonged resting phase, the diplotene stage. This happens under the influence of oocyte maturation inhibitor, which is secreted by follicular cell. And these primary oocyte remain in this stage until puberty or even up to menopause. The primary oocyte continue to become atrictic during this phase. Notable point during this phase is that estimated number of primary oocyte at birth is roughly 0.7 to 2 million, at puberty 0.4 billion and at adolescence there are only 40,000 primary oocytes in the ovaries. Number two, during fertile life, normally about 500 overlute all remaining degenerate. Number three, contraceptives used to avoid pregnancy decreases the number of oocyte that ovulate. Phase third, puberty to menopause comprises three stages of development of the oocyte. First, primordial follicle is a primary oocyte which is surrounded by a single layer of flattened follicular cells. At puberty, under the influence of gonadotrophins secreted by pituitary gland, first for the first time and afterward with each cycle, 5 to 15 primordial follicle begin to mature with each cycle. Second stage is growing follicle. It is a primary oocyte covered by a single layer of cuboidal follicular cells and a glycoprotein layer secreted by both the follicular cells as well as oocyte itself and is present underneath the cuboidal follicular cell layer. Third stage is primary follicle. It is a growing follicle having stratified follicular cells layer and a definite zona pellucida. The surrounding connected tissue is changed and is renamed as theca folliculi, which is divisible into two layers, inner vascular and secretory layer, which comprises of granulosa cells and is named as theca interna and an outer avascular layer of connective tissue, which is named as theca externa. Graphene follicle is a maturing follicle having a size of 10 millimeter or more with the large antrum which pushes primary oocyte surrounded by a mound of follicular cells towards the wall of the follicle. And this whole, this whole appearance is named as cumulus oophorus. Theca folliculi become more developed and is present as an envelope of condensed ovarian connective tissue surrounding a vesicular follicle. Its two layer, number one, theca interna, which comprises of initially granulosa cells, these cells now change themselves as steroid secreting cells and this layer become richly supplied with blood vessels. Fibrous tissue of the theca externa merges with the ovarian stroma. 
formation of this graphene follicle leads to resumption and completion of meiotic 1 division by the primary oocyte and this produces number 1 a bigger cell with most of the cytoplasm the secondary oocyte number 2 a much smaller cell without any cytoplasm the first polar body shortly before ovulation meiotic first division is completed and meiotic second division starts notable point is that resumption of meiotic one division and ovulation occurs under the influence of luteinizing lute, luteinizing hormone in the shape of a surge mature female gamete or ovum is produced in the ovary shed from the surface of the ovary into the peritoneal cavity the process is named as ovulation it contains genetic information to be transmitted by the female when fertilized by a sperm is capable of developing into a new individual features of an ovum number 1 it is a secondary oocyte the nucleus of which is in metaphase of the second meiotic division it has got haploid number of chromosome with half the chromatin material it has got abundant cytoplasm and a layer of gly glycoprotein named as zona pellucida outside is a layer multiple layers of granulosa cells which are arranged radially and are named as corona radiata notable point is that meiotic second division is completed only if fertilization occur or this ovum degener degenerates within 24 hours notable point an oocyte is an excellent form having genetic material that can be preserved for an extended period of time which is named as cryo conservation or cryo preservation hormonal regulation of oogenesis with the onset of puberty in the female it heralds release of gonadotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus for the first time these hormones act on anterior pituitary gland which start releasing gonadotropins ff fsh and lh are luteinizing hormone follicular stimulating har hormone acts on granulosa cells of the follicle in the ovary which leads to production of estrogen hormone these estrogens continue to act on granulosa cell and lead to proliferation and stratification around the oocyte as the follicle begins to increase in size connective tissue around the follicle become more organized and is named as theca folliculi which divides into inner and outer layers as earlier defined luteinizing hormone acts on the theca interna cells with further production and subsequent conversion of androgens into estrogen hormones this whole process comprises the feed positive feedback loop another notable point in the diagram on the right side is that luteinizing hormone prompts release of secondary oocyte from the mature graphene follicle 
remaining residue of graphene follicle develops into corpus luteum which starts secreting ascending levels of progesterone the this progesterone have negative impact on the hypothalamus and pituitary and checks the release of gonadotropin releasing hormones as well as gonadotropins hence decreased production of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and progesterone as well this whole process makes the net negative feedback over the most of this cycle now let us have a summary of events during eogenesis and its significance the primary oocyte by replication of dna leads to production of 46 double structured chromosome this primary oocyte by first maturation or meiotic division leads to reduction of chromosome numbers and gene cross over with the resultant 20 23 double structured chromosomes in the shape of a polar body and a secondary oocyte the secondary oocyte by second maturation division involving independent assortment leads to production of 23 single single structured chromosomes the chromatids final result is one mature oocyte having genetic makeup different from the parent oogonium and three polar bodies cryo conservation is a new idea it is a process in which biological material are frozen by using liquid nitrogen to achieve extreme low temperature for the purpose to preserve the material for an extended period of time and an oocyte is an excellent form having genetic material that can be collected for preservation for a long period of time clinical significance of oogenesis the ideal biological maternal age for reproduction is considered to be 18 to 35 years as is the case with any biological process with increasing maternal age the potential for errors to happen increases and the resultant cells that is gametes may or may not be capable of combining to form a viable embryo most likely point at which these error can occur or number 1 prophase and number 2 anaphase of the first meiotic division these errors can be divided into two categories number 1 non aneuploidy abnormalities which occur during pro phase 1 and there are normal total number of chromosome however there may be number 1 deletion that is loss of a variable portion of a chromosome and the example is a macro deletion of arm p of chromosome 5 as in cry du chat syndrome number 2 duplication a segment of a chromosome is replicated and reattached to the terminal segment of this same chromosome number 3 is reciprocal translocation this occurs between two non homologous chromosome and the best example is Philadelphia chromosome, which is seen in chronic myeloid myeloid leukemia, in which a segment of chromosome nine is attached to the chromosome twenty-three, or vice versa. The second group of errors 
is aneuploidy abnormalities. In these abnormalities, chromosome number is either increased or decreased. This type of abnormalities occur during anaphase of first meiotic division in the shape of a failure of bivalent to separate, which is named as anaphase lag, the non-disjunction. Subsequently, cells have either too much or too little genetic information. Aneuploidies having increased genetic information in the shape of more number of chromosome are more likely to survive than those with too little information that is less number of chromosomes. We can divide aneuploidies into two groups, aneuploidies involving autosomes or aneuploidies involving sex chromosomes. First, the non-disjunctions of autosomes. In such cases, an oocyte with 24 chromosomes or with 22 chromosome is produced. If an oocyte with 24 chromosome unites with the normal sperm, a zygote with 47 chromosome is produced having three representative of a particular chromosome and the condition is named as trisomy. Example is trisomy 21, which is represented as Down syndrome. If an oocyte with 22 chromosomes unites with the normal sperm, a zygote with 45 chromosomes, that is one less than normal is produced and the condition is named as monosomy and monosomy zygotes have less have less, less chances to survive second group is non disjunctions of sex chromosome if this happens an oocyte with double x or without x chromosome is produced. If an oocyte with double X chromosome unites with a normal sperm having Y chromosome, a zygote with 47 double XY chromosome is produced and the condition is named as Klein-Felter syndrome. George Washington, ex-president of USA, was considered to be suffering from Klein-Felter syndrome. And at present, Tom Cruise, an actor of English film, is suffering from this abnormality. If an oocyte with no X chromosome unites with a normal sperm having X chromosome, a zygote with 45 X chromosome is produced and the condition is named as Turner syndrome. A well-known Actress and retired athlete, Droth Mary Jones, is a case of Turner syndrome. Comments and suggestions will be welcomed. Thank you for listening and watching.